The Americans call Europe the old continent or the old world. Indeed, Europe is old and it has a lot of really old things, especially when you compare it to America. Nowadays, though, Europe has evolved and it has a lot of modern things. Even places like Valencia has places that looks like it came from the future. Yet there are places that look like time forgot, time stood still. Places that remains the same for hundreds of years. In fact, it's a place where you don't have to go to a museum. The whole place is a museum. Welcome to our pilgrimage to a 7,000 year old place called the island of Malta. We flew from Valencia to Malta. We got to Malta around 8 p.m. and took an e-cab. Malta's version of Uber. Our Airbnb was on top of the floor of a very old building with a million dollar view of the harbor of the ancient town of Virgo. This is where we're staying, St. Lawrence Church. That's where we're staying, the top, third floor. Or they call it second floor. Good morning. We are in Virgo, which is one of the oldest, most historical part of Malta. Look at this. This is the top of our Airbnb. This is extremely beautiful. So the place reminds me of the Middle East. It looks like it's Middle East, the color of the buildings and how it's made up. The only difference is that everything looks Christian. So it's amazing. Wow. Look at the yes. Too many of them. We saw really big yes over there where Port uh, Angelo is. Look at this, our first Maltese food. Or maybe, I don't know. Breakfast. Someone's happy because it's cheap. Yay. Cappuccino, of course, yeah. Why did we come here in Malta? What is the religious significance of this place? We will answer all those questions and more as we travel to this wonderful island whose importance is not only religious, but the very existence of the civilization as we know it. Come, join us in our pilgrimage to the island of Malta. Try to get in it for a passage. There's a lot of war museum. It's not only one. In Acts chapter 28, verse 1, Saint Luke describes Saint Paul's unfortunate event of being shipwrecked in an island called Malta. That apparently started Christianity in this place, making it one of the oldest Christian nation in the world. But did that actually happen? Let's walk the ancient streets of Valletta, its capital city, to find out. That's Fort San Angelo. Like a steamboat. Summer? Summer. Of oh, summer. May. South Arabic. That is the big dog. Look at that. That's a steamboat. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, that's the boat that goes to Gozo. Another cruise ship. 
so approximately there's four to five cruise ships that visit Malta every day. There's 10,000 people inside, that's 15,000 roaming the streets of Valletta. That's uh, Ford, uh, Angelo, it is one of the very well defended during the siege of 1565 by the, the Muslim army of the Ottoman Empire or yeah, the Turkish Empire or whatever. Go through that lift. Look at this. You know how how tall this is. Look at this. Looking at this grand harbor of Malta, I can't help but think, what had the locals experienced during one of the worst times of their lives during the Great Siege of Malta? Most historians remember the siege of Malta in 1565. After the fall of Baker in 1291, the Knights Hospitaliers, otherwise known as Knights of St. John, ended up in Malta, their new home. The only problem is, Malta sits in one of the most strategic parts of the Mediterranean. It is in the crossroads of Eastern and Western Mediterranean, between Europe and Asia. He who controls Malta can control the Mediterranean both militarily and economically. It can also be a powerful staging area for a European invasion, much like what Taiwan is today. The only difference is back then it was in China who once to rule the seas. It was the Ottoman Empire under the flag of Islam. Suleiman the Magnificent, better known among the Muslims as Suleiman the Ghazi, meaning jihadi or raider, commissioned the Barbary pirate Barbarossa to finally eliminate the headquarters of the infidel knights hospitaliers in the island of Malta so they can continue the Christian slave trade. Suleiman sent one of the largest sea fleet ever assembled, 30,000 Ottoman seasoned warriors to burn the tiny island of Malta to the ground. Jean Parsot de Vallette, the 71-year-old Grand Master of the Knights, prepared the 8,000 citizens of Malta by telling them when he said, "This." persons, my brothers, are the enemies of Jesus Christ. Today it is a question of the defense of our faith as to whether the book of the evangelist or the gospels is to be superseded by that of the Quran. God on this occasion demands of us our lives, already vowed to his service. Happy will those be who first consummate this sacrifice. For one month, the defenders of Fort St. Elmo and Valletta stood strong and killed many invaders even in the midst of relentless artillery bombardment from the powerful Ottoman ships. Eventually, all 1,500 Maltese defenders of Fort St. Elmo were slaughtered. Ottoman commander Mustafa ordered their mutilated corpses along with one Maltese priest nailed to wooden cross and set adrift in the Grand Harbor in order to demoralize the locals. It backfired. The Christians beheaded all Muslim prisoners and used their heads as cannonballs. Despite the 130,000 cannonballs that were fa fired upon Malta, the Christians defied odds. After four months, two-thirds of the Muslim forces were dead. When the invaders heard that 10,000 Christian forces have landed in St. Paul's Bay led by Sicilian viceroy Toledo, as a, as a reinforcement, the Ottoman army trembled in fear. They finally fled on September 11, perhaps a date that had not been forgotten. That's the Triton Fountain. Look at the walls. This is crazy. Can you bug?
As we walk around the UNESCO World Heritage City of Valletta, Malta's capital city, which is perhaps one of the smallest capital city in the world not named Vatican, we wonder how did all this museum like streets and buildings came to be. Everywhere we look, we seem to encounter a piece of living history. So we discovered a brief history of Malta. The earliest inhabitants of the three Maltese islands of Malta, Guzo, and Comino is said to have traveled by boat from Europe and probably Africa. The megalithic temples they have are older than the pyramids of Egypt. The Phoenicians had a colony around 800 BC and the Romans conquered the island in 218 BC. After the Romans, the Byzantine Christians took over the island for 500 years with brief interruptions from various kingdoms around the area. After that, the Muslims for 200 years. Then the Normans came until the Knights of St. John made it their own in the 16th century. In 1800, the British controlled the island until their independence in 1964. During the Second World War, Malta became the most bomb place on earth by the Germans and the Italians. The island was crucial in the fight of the Allies against Rommel in North Africa as it supplied their resources. They came from eight countries. France, Germany, Spain, Italy, Portugal. They built Valletta because they were attacked by the Ottoman, the Turkish, 1565. When the Turkish lost, the Knights was then becoming the king. The Pope gave them the money and they built Valletta. The enemy saw what they built and they never came back. They attacked Europe this time from the north of Europe, Romania, Poland. So the Knights continued investing money behind. You might be wondering why the Knights called their cathedral after St. John. I'm just kidding, of course you do. They're called Knights of St. John after all. Built between 1573 and 1578, the relics, the arts, and the paintings on this holy place is enormous. As what our driver guide said, inside is a painting of Caravaggio that is priceless, literally speaking. He referred to the beheading of St. John the Baptist in 1608. Caravaggio is one of the greatest painters of all time. The painting located within the oratory is the largest work of art by Caravaggio and this is the only one to bear his signature, the reason for being priceless. Julian. 
Listening to the locals, you notice that their language is different. It's uh, mostly Italian and a little bit of Arabic. So it looks like it's an Afro-Asiatic language. First, Maltese food. You got sausage, you got octopus, and goat cheese right here. What is a better deal? Get a soup. Of course. Good. Check this out. Where I'm standing is a big church called St. Lawrence. And check this out. Right next to it, probably, what, 50 meters? Less than that. There's another one. There's another church. Even closer to St. Lawrence is another church. Three churches. Right where I'm standing in Virgo. That's how many churches are there. So they're saying this is a very Catholic country. One probably the, the most conservative. This is the Grandmasters. Knights of St. John or the Spit of Years. St. Paul is the national symbol of being a Maltese, as they credit St. Paul for giving them their faith, as shown in their strong and proud display of the Maltese cross. Over 98% of Maltese people are Roman Catholics with a strong conservative family-oriented society. In 60 AD, St. Paul landed in what many locals believe to be the tiny island of St. Paul in the northwest part of Malta. He was being brought to Rome for trial. In Acts chapter 28, St. Paul was said to have been bitten by a venomous snake but suffered no ill effects so the locals thought that he was a god.
When St. Paul was in Malta, he stayed in a cave. Today that cave is now called St. Paul's Grotto in Rabat, Malta, near Medina. St. Paul wasted no time by proclaiming the Gospel of Jesus Christ. When at this time, the highest ranking Roman official Publius heard about this, he invited St. Paul in his house. Apparently, St. Paul prayed over Publius' father-in-law for healing upon knowing that he was sick. He was then cured. Publius was so convinced of St. Paul's newfound faith that he himself converted to Christianity and became the first bishop of Malta. According to church records, a door from a small 4th century church that was destroyed by an earthquake in the 17th century is now being used in the sacristy of the Cathedral of Medina. Both this 4th century small church and the cathedral is said to have been built on top of Publius' house. According to some scholars, St. Paul may have never been to Malta. The reason? The incident of the venomous snake biting St. Paul might have never happened in Malta. As per the scientists who studied flora and fauna in Malta, there was never been evidence of the existence of venomous snakes in the island of Malta. For them, the island where St. Paul was shipwrecked is the island of Milita in the Adriatic Sea near Croatia. Milita is said to have be, been the home of the horned viper, a venomous snake. So now the question is, if this is true, how do you explain the existence of the early Christians in the island of Malta? Like Saint Agatha, the martyr who hid in the catacombs in Rabat during the Christian persecution of Emperor, Emperor Decius in 249 AD. The catacombs, according to records, were used to be the venue in celebrating the Holy Mass of the early Christians during the Roman times. Who then brought Christianity to Malta if it wasn't St. Paul? Hmm, that begs the question and the answer. So, let me know in the comments below what you think of both arguments. Was St. Paul really in Malta? For me, he was there. But let me know if, it's, if you think otherwise.